Okay, so you want to start playing around with flavors, but you don't know how to design your own recipes? Let me show you how I make mine. Hello and welcome back to another Beaver DIY day. So a little bit out of the norm, we are doing a third video for the week for the reason that I've been inundated with questions regarding how to make your own alcohol at home. So whether it's a cider, a wash to distill, a wine or whatever, um, the basic principles stay the same. You will need sugar, you will need water and you will need yeast. So that's the basics that you're going to need to make a alcohol that you can consume. So if you are looking for a really basic recipe, literally just mix sugar and water together, add yeast, it will ferment, create alcohol and you can drink it. But if you want some flavor with it, um, there's a lot of options and varying options that you have available to you. But people are unsure whether they can use certain fruits or certain um, sugars. So let's get into the basics of it. I will be making a basic recipe explaining how I calculate my recipes uh, to get to a point where I can either run it through my still or I can bottle it and consume it as a beer, a cider or a wine. So let's start. First off, decide what you want to make. If you want to make a cider, the cider is made with fruits uh, that is fermented out. So preferably a 100% pure fruit juice or at least 30% of the, the liquid that goes in needs to be a fruit based product. So whether it's fruit concentrate or the fruit juices or the full berries or whatever you're going to be using, at least 30% of the volume needs to be a, uh, needs to be the fruit. Okay. Uh, next up is the amount of sugar that you're going to use. Now, the amount of sugar that you're going to add to, into the solution will be determined by the yeast that you're going to be using. So, if you're going to be using brewer's yeast, um, you can go up to about 12% alcohol by volume. If you're going to be using a normal bread yeast, you can go up to 6% alcohol by volume. And if you're going to be using speciality yeasts, the manufacturer will specify how much uh, alcohol you'll be able to get out of using that specific yeast. Now what we will be using today in yeast is a brewer's yeast but this is my yeast starter type of deal. So it's a packet of yeast that I have, have dissolved in a two liter jar and what I've done is uh, I'll be using 250 mils of it and then just topping it up with sugar water again and allowing it to regain uh, the lost yeast that I'll be using. So uh, this allows you to stretch your yeast quite far. If you want to see a full video on how to do this, please let me know in the description below. So let's start off with planning our recipe. So I want to shoot for a cider today. So the cider I'll be making is a berry mix cider or a mixed berry cider. So I went down to my local grocery store and I picked up some fruit juices. Very important, check on the back of the fruit juice or on the label somewhere that there is no preservatives that has been added to the fruit juice. Now preservatives kill yeast, that's what they're designed to do so that these things don't ferment on the shelf. So that's number one, get yourself some fruit juices or fruits, fresh fruits if you want to. I also picked up a bag of frozen berries. Why frozen? Because frozen berries, as you can see, as they start thawing, they're already into a paste. So the cell walls of this has been broken down. So you don't have to use pectins on that to break the cell walls down to extract as much flavor out of them as possible. Okay. And for the final bottling, I'll be using some coconut as well, some shaved coconuts. Um, but yeah, I'll be using that in the bottling, so it won't be part of this video. If you want to see the video of me bottling the cider and using the coconuts, please once again, down in the description, just tell me so I can show you guys. Okay, so now for the recipe or for how I calculate the recipe. Check on the back of the, uh, the juice or the berries or on the internet or whatever you have. For this specific cranberry juice, there is 11 grams of sugar per 100 milliliters. So 11 grams of sugar 
per 100 milliliters. Um, and I've got a liter here, so that's 110 grams of sugar in this bottle here, and that's one liter of liquid. I've got four liters of liquid, so that's 440 grams of um, sugar. Next up, I have the cranberries here, and according to the internet, cranberries, it is cranberries, right? No, it's raspberries, sorry. So the raspberries here has 0.8 grams of sugar for every 19 grams of berries. So all I did is I took 19 grams and I divided it into a hundred that gave me 53 something, okay? And then I calculated, if you wanna see all the maths, I'll put it in the description down below. But then I calculated how much sugar I have in a one kg bag of the berries, okay? And then all I did is I subtracted the amount of sugar that I have here from the amount of sugar that I need to add to get to my 6% ABV that I'm running to. So how much sugar to get to 6%? It's 125 grams of pure sugar added to one full liter of water, bringing your volume to 1.125 liters. So it's not 125 grams and then adding liquid to get to a liter. It's one liter of liquid with 125 grams of sugar will give you a ABV of roughly 6%. You might get a little bit more, you might get a little bit less, but that's in the ballpark, okay? So, um, once again, full recipe in the description. So I'm not gonna go over the full recipe that I'll be using here. I'll be going over the principles I used to make the recipe. Okay, so let's start getting everything combined together. First up, bucket something to ferment in slightly larger than the size that you will be fermenting so this is a 20 liter bucket but there is enough headspace if I add 20 liters to it for this thing to ferment out and not create a head or a boil over you'll need an airlock of some kind so the airlock very important to prevent any buggies from getting in so if you want to see a video on airlocks, I made one. I'll link the card up in the description here or up at the top here for you to check out how to make a DIY airlock. Um, and then yeah, so let's get into mixing. First things first, I'm gonna start adding my fruit juices, my sugars, and then I will be blending my berries and adding the water into the bucket. Cool. I want to blend up my berries so I can get as much of the juices out as possible. So blender, food processor, mortar and pestle, doing it with a masher, it doesn't really matter. Just get as much of this out as possible. And as always, remember to keep it clean. So this is just a sanitary liquid that allows me to sanitize and clean kill any of the buggies in and around where I will be working. Okay, so we have our smoothie that goes into there. Let's add a little bit of water, get as much of this out as possible. So now that our fruit blend is in there, and we know that there is 450, 460 grams of sugar currently in the bottom of this bucket that is consuming five liters of my bucket. So that means I've got about 15 liters of water left that I need to add. Okay, but I'm also gonna be adding sugar. So the sugar I'll be adding here will also increase the volume of my water so the sugar i have here is 1.7 grams uh, 1.7 kilograms of sugar to bring it up to uh, the abv on a 20 liter once again if you want to see the calculations they will be in the description down below so let's add our sugar sugar added 
What I'll be adding is a little bit of lemon juice. This is just to bring the pH of this whole liquid down. Um, I know the pH of the water that I'll be using, so I know exactly how much lemon juice I need to use to bring the pH down. If you don't know how much, uh, get a pool tester or something um, to test the pH. You want to be between five and six, uh, closer to five as possible, will give you a better result for your yeast. So now all we do need to do is top it up with water to our 20 litre line. When adding the water, try and incorporate as much um, air as possible, oxygen into it. Because uh, yeast loves oxygen and they love nitrogen. So get as much of it as possible. So last little bit of water to get it to my 20 Litre mark, leaving enough space for my yeast. Okay, so before adding my yeast, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it one quick stir to make sure that all the sugar is dissolved. So the trick here is uh, the moment you think all the sugar is dissolved, stir it for a couple more times because there will always be some sugar left over. So if you were gonna make this and you wanna run it through your still, and um, you want to get the max ABV out of it as possible so you don't care about drinking it straight from here you want to run it through your still to make a nice berry mampur or a berry brandy all you need to do is up your fruit content up your sugar content and up until you get to the number that you require for the yeast that you'll be using if you're going to be using brewer's yeast all you need to do is literally double this recipe and uh, with your sugar and your fruit to get to the number of 12%. So time for a quick taste test. Okay, nice berry, nice sugar, and yeah, you can taste that tart raspberry flavor and the other juices. So yeah, what we need to do now is I just want to confirm my specific gravity to make sure that I'm on the in the range that I want to be at with my uh, with my sugar content. It's not necessary to do this. Um, if you want to ballpark it, you can ballpark it. If you want to be specific and have consistent results over and over and over then yes, invest in one of these. Okay, so I'm right on the money of uh, 10 point, uh, oh, 1.040. So that will give me 6% alcohol by volume once this is fermented out. Okay, lastly we need to add our yeast. So the yeast we'll be adding, like I said, is the brewer's yeast, but this is my yeast starter. So I'll be taking 250 moles off of this, then I'll be adding uh, 250 mils back into it and I'll just keep using it as is and yeah I'll stretch my one packet of yeast into multiple fermentation Okay, so I guess I'll be making another yeast starter once again if you want to see that video um, please put it down in the comments. So all I'm going to be doing now is I'll be pitching a packet of dry yeast straight on top of this and uh, letting it ferment. Okay, so yeah, that's the yeast in. Give it a quick stir, just to make sure that the yeast goes into the bottom. It gets mixed into the liquid. Okay, 
So, like I said guys, doesn't matter what kind of fruit you want to use, what kind of sugars you want to use, at the end of the day, as long as it has sugar, you can add water and it dissolves and you can add yeast, you can ferment it. You can literally take a bottle of coke, shake the gas out, add yeast into it and allow that to ferment out and you can consume it and it will have alcohol in it. So, this is our berry recipe. If you want to see me adding the coconut and doing the secondary ferment fermentation, please hit a comment down in the description and as always, have a like and have a subscribe. Thank you very much for joining me. Have a luck a day.